Hello, I'm Mark, and welcome back to Design Optics Fast, where we help you to, well, design optics fast. Today, we're going to look at relay lenses. Now, imagine you already have some lens, and it's forming an image with quality that you're happy with. But the image is not in the place you need it to be, or maybe it's not the size you need it to be, or both. You need a relay lens that will translate the image plane of this lens to some other location and size. Now, at first glance, this sounds like an easy problem because that's everything we need to construct the first order design of the relay lens using the process I explained in the where do you start sections. But there's a complexity. The radiometry of the primary lens's image plane is not the same as the original source scene. It's been filtered by the primary lens. The intermediate image is not a Lambertian source radiating out into all angles. Of all the rays being generated at the original source, only a specific solid angle enters the primary lens at each field point, and only that solid angle is present at the intermediate image. This means that light from the intermediate image deviates away from the optical axis, and so the relay lens may need to be very large in order to capture and re-image the light to its new location. In most cases, the relay lens is needed to become unfeasibly large. The solution to this is to use a field lens to image the exit pupil of the primary system onto the entrance pupil of the relay system. I'll walk you through a real example of this and I'll show you how to design a relay lens that does precisely this. So come on, let's take a look. Let's assume you already have this lens and its design is fixed. It's an f5 lens working at infinite conjugates and it produces an image diameter of 36 millimeters. We need to relay the image to a location 200 millimeters away and reduce the image location size to say 20 millimeters diameter. Now, at first glance, this is easy. The image height of the primary lens becomes the object height of the relay lens. We know the total track length of the lens is 200 millimeters. The incoming light has an F5 cone angle and the wavelength range is the same as the primary lens. Let's fire up a second instance of Optic Studio and use a paraxial lens to sketch out the first order properties of this lens. Now this was set up by using object space numerical aperture as the aperture type and setting it to 0.1, which is the same as the image space NA of the primary lens. We set the field of view to an object height of 36 divided by two is 18 millimeters using equal area fields. We use a paraxial lens initially with a default focal length of 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters away from the object plane. We use a position solve on the last thickness to require the total lens thickness to be 200 millimeters. This is a very handy way to enforce total length constraints. The optimization variables are the distance from the object and the focal length of the paraxial lens. The second thickness from the paraxial lens to the image plane is set to maintain a total thickness of 200 millimeters from object to image. And so we'll always keep the system at the desired length. Optimizing the lens is equally quick. As we're using a paraxial lens, we don't need to worry about aberrations. So optimizing the system requires just a two operand merit function. To bring this lens to focus, we require the marginal ray to have zero height on the image surface, that's operand two. And to get the correct magnification, we require the image height to be minus 10 millimeters on the image surface. Hit optimize 
and the merit function quickly reduces to zero. It goes to zero because we have two optimization variables for the two targets of desired image size and small spot size. So this is perfect. We have relayed the primary image to the new location and changed its size. Everything is as we have foreseen. Or is it? To check, save this file as relay.zmx and go back to the primary lens design. Choose File, Insert Lens, and insert the relay file at the image location of the primary lens. This gives us mainly what we expect, but with one thing that maybe we did not expect. The aperture of the paraxial lens is huge because the rays at the primary image at the edge of the field are propagating away from the optical axis. So this lens meets our requirements of image size, location, and light capture, but it's huge. With a focal length of minus 46 millimeters and an aperture size of 174 millimeters, it's around f0.26. This lens will be impossible to replace with a real lens system, no matter how many lenses, diffractives, and A-spheres we use. The mistake we made was in assuming that the object of the relay system radiates out into all angles. Instead, it has the same radiance as the image of the primary lens, meaning we must match the spatial and angular extent of the light reaching the primary image. It's not enough that the object size of the relay matches the image size of the primary. We must also match the pupils. And there are two lessons we need to learn from this. The first is that the aperture of the relay lens should be set by the exit pupil of the primary system. And the second is that a field lens should form an image of the primary lens exit pupil onto the relay lens pupil so as to reduce the size of the relay system. We'll now look at both of these. In order to correctly represent the incoming lights, we must match not only the primary lens's image size, but its pupil size and location also. We do not need the detailed prescription of the primary lens for this. Just the exit pupil size and location relative to the image surface. We can readily get this from Optic Studio, but it is usually provided by the lens manufacturer and can be obtained experimentally as well. In this case, we have the lens file, so we can get the pupil data from the system data report. To build this into the model of the Relay lens, do this. First, add two surfaces at the object surface and put the approximately 128 millimeter thickness on the new surface two. Place a pickup solve on the thickness of surface one and pick up from surface zero with a scale factor of minus one. Then add the distance to the exit pupil of the primary lens to the thickness of surface zero. This places surface one at the location of the primary lens's exit pupil. And we then propagate back to the image object location. Make surface one the stop surface and set the entrance pupil diameter equal to the exit pupil diameter of the primary lens. This gives us the radiometry of the exit pupil of the primary as the source radiance of the relay lens. Now, this is a very compact way to set up the design of a relay. The field of view of the relay lens is set to the image size of the primary lens and the stop surface of the relay is positioned relative to the object surface by the same distance as the exit pupil of the primary lens is from its image. 
the entrance pupil of the relay is set to the same size as the exit pupil of the primary lens. This correctly models the pupil imaging of the relay lens, but it does not solve the problem of the unfeasibly large lens. To do this, we need to use a field lens. Field lens images the exit pupil of the primary objective onto the entrance pupil of the relay lens. It refracts the diverging cone of light produced by the primary back towards the optical axis. And it results in the smallest possible size of the relay optics. To make one, just convert surface two, which is at the image location of the primary lens, to a paraxial surface. We can calculate the focal length of this lens, knowing that its object conjugate is at minus 42.4 millimeters, and its image is at 128.6, or we can just leave it to the optimizer. That's my preference, and a single line merit function that targets the chief ray to have zero height at the lens location is all we need to establish the required focal length. The relay lens still has the same focal length, but it's now much smaller and has a reasonable F number that we can design real lenses for. The field lens has matched the pupils of the two systems. The next step is to remove the paraxial relay lens and replace it with three doublets and a glass plate that will become a field flattener. Note that if the relay were one-to-one, -one, so that the object and image were the same size, and therefore the magnification was plus or minus one, we would have had a completely symmetric design. And all transverse aberrations, such as distortion, coma, and lateral color, would be zero. This would be much easier to design, and is the reason why multiple relay systems like endoscopes work so well. However, in the specification here, I made the image size different to the object size so as to not make things too easy. The field flattener is just two millimeters thick, made of NBK7 and made variable only on its front side. There is a fixed gap of 0.5 millimeters before the new image plane. Position solve on the thickness of surface 11 maintains a total thickness of 197.2 millimeters from the field lens, making a total distance of 200 millimeters to the image plane. Now the merit function was built using the optimization wizard, using RMS spot size accurate to R to the power nine, a lightly weighted improved manufacturing yield term and reasonable mechanical boundaries. The REAY operand targets the image height to be minus 10 millimeters. Glass substitution was used with the same templates as I use elsewhere. Global search was run for a few minutes and then hammer was run for a few minutes on the best global search candidate. This design resulted. Now this is only a candidate design and it can be refined further, but for the purposes of this exercise, let's just say that this design is adequate. Note that the exit pupil of the primary lens is sharply focused between the first and second doublets. Let's now move on to replacing the paraxial field lens with a real field lens. Let's now replace the paraxial field lens with a real lens. We'll focus on surfaces two through seven. Now it's tempting to delete the paraxial lens and just add a replacement real lens, just as we did with the relay lens. But this will change the optical system drastically as the lens is a field lens. So instead, we're going to add a flat window 
just after the paraxial lens and transfer power gently from the paraxial lens to the real lens without disturbing the performance of the whole lens system. So on surface three, press insert twice to add two new surfaces. In principle, the real field lens would be positioned exactly at the intermediate image, but I have added an offset of 0.5 millimeters surface two, so that any dust or scratches on the field lens surface will not be imaged sharply onto the final image. To optimize the field lens, we will make the two radii thicknesses and distance to the first lens of the real variable, as well as the radii and thicknesses of the whole relay lens. To transfer power smoothly from the paraxial lens to the real lens, we make the focal length of the paraxial lens an optimization variable and we add a constraint to the merit function to drive this value to a very large amount, say 10,000 millimeters. During the optimization, this line will force the paraxial lens towards ever lower power and the rest of the merit function will maintain focus on the image plane and the position solve on the final surface will maintain the length of the entire intermediate image to final image distance to be 200 millimeters. Hammering this system gives a lens like so. The paraxial lens has a focal length now of 10,000 millimeters and so is very weak. We can convert it to a standard surface so it stays in place at the intermediate image, but performs no optical function. Remove the PMVA operand as well, as it's no longer needed. Re-optimizing gives this as the final relay lens with field lens and field flattener. Now comparing this design to the version that used the paraxial field lens is informative. Moving from a paraxial field lens to a real field lens has only a small effect on the aberrations of the image, but a large effect on the aberrations of the pupil. Note that the sharp image of the primary lens's exit pupil has been lost. This is called pupil aberration. Now, pupil aberration may or may not be important in your design. If it is, then the field lens must be refined in the same way as we do for any imaging system. Convert the singlet to a doublet, replace with a triplet, and so on. The impact of pupil aberration on the imaging of the Rayleigh lens is a loss of relative illumination, so that the edges of the images are darker or brighter, but usually darker, than they would otherwise be. The aberrations of the field lens have little impact on the imaging performance of the relay, as can be seen from the Zydel plots. The field lens is surfaces three and four, and these are amongst the least aberrating surfaces of the whole system, despite the high power of that lens. Remember that the field lens images the exit pupil of the primary onto the entrance pupil of the relay. Aberrations of the field lens affect the quality of the pupil image more than the relay lens's image. Up until now, we've assumed only the intermediate image size, the exit pupil position of the primary, and the exit pupil location, all of which are easily obtainable. However, if the primary lens's full design is available, we can adjust the design further to account for the aberrations of the primary lens. To do so, simply copy the relay lens and field lens system to the clipboard, paste it into the primary system's lens file at the image surface, and reset the thickness solve on the last thickness to point to the real image surface of the primary lens. Now we have the relay with the primary lens, we can re-optimize the relay optics to account for the aberrations of the primary system.
I won't do that here as we've covered the key points of the Relay lens design that I wanted to cover, which are 1. You must model the exit pupil of the primary lens in the Relay lens or design the Relay lens with the optical design of the primary system in place. You may not have access to the optical design of the primary lens, so the pupil modelling method must be used in that case. 2. A field lens is needed to image the exit pupil of the primary lens into the entrance pupil of the relay lens. The field lens causes pupil aberrations which may affect relative illumination. In general, a field lens's aberrations do not degrade the final image much. If pupil aberration is a concern, it can be improved by treating the field lens as an imaging system and going through the same improvement process that any imaging system would go through. 